without further ado, uh, Mr. Hanrahan, please share your library, librarian wisdom with us. Uh, hello, students. I'm Mr. Hanrahan. Some of you I know and have met, and maybe some of you I haven't. Um, I'm going to end up uh, sharing three databases today, like Mrs. Uh, Wagner said, and uh, I'd like you to uh, interrupt me if what I'm talking about uh, freezes or the Zoom doesn't work because I want to know, but we also want to take questions in between each of uh, the introductions to the databases. So if you want to jot down a note or put something in chat or unmute, you'd have to say, hey, hold it, that's not working right. Or if you have a question, normally we'll take them at the end, but if something isn't working right, please interrupt us. Okay, um, are you ready, Ms. Wagner? So uh, most of you, Are we still good? Okay, good. All right, most of you use Safari. And when you use Safari, um, you probably are gonna go, like, go right to Google. And I think uh, for this assignment, a, a better place to start is like from the Wheeling website. And I think it's also a good idea to like bookmark this if you haven't already done that. So you could, um, do that here with the up arrow and I'm going to use that up arrow a lot from this menu up here and uh, you should bookmark this page I just think it's valuable from there if you could uh, split screen or multitask like while I'm talking about this also do what I'm doing I think there'd be a lot of value in that so I go to this menu at the top and I go to academics and then the word library here. And at the top, you can see, you can see that this is uh, where I came from, the homepage, academics, and then uh, library right here at the top. So it's also a good idea to maybe bookmark this page, add a bookmark to this, so that you had access to the library resources right here that we're gonna go to. This is like the database page. You could also get to the same spot by going over here, find databases we subscribe to. They both point to the same place. So from this page, also another page maybe that you want to bookmark, I'm going to go over three debate databases. I'm going to say what they are, and then we're going to review them one at a time and then take questions in between. Um, and I apologize to students who are like already know this and are already really good at it, but hopefully you get some takeaways today that have some value. I'm going to go over opposing viewpoints right here in the middle of the page. And then also that's a Gale database and then this EBSCO database a little bit farther down this one called Mass Ultra. And then finally the CQ researcher. This is just a way to uh, get access to these databases so that you can um, get other keywords. And it should happen about that quick on a fairly fast internet. Um, I think it's a good idea that you do that. And you can see at the top over here, it says 214. I can also sign in with Google over here at the top. And I would pick my D214 account. And when it work, works right, your name should show up at the top according to how your name is registered with the district. This database has like opposing sides of controversial issues. And instead of immediately typing in a search in here, I think it's a good idea to go right here to browse issues. And then they organize the issues by these different topics like business and economics, family issues, you can see all the different ways they organize. If you wanted to select one of those, it would narrow this long A to Z list down. But I'm interested in the death penalty. So as I look for the death penalty, I get disappointed because I can see that the death penalty isn't here. Is there another name for the death penalty I could use? Um, yeah, it's a synonym. It's called capital punishment. So as I click on the capital punishment, um, issue it shows me an overview and you could read more and then use this overview as a start to gather some keywords that immediately comes at a pro and con for your issue looks at the laws with the death penalty looks at reform that would be solutions or changes um when the death penalty came back through the court system and there's like 
state level reforms, lethal injection controversy, and then there's a citation at the bottom and you need the uh, MLA citation. You could also just hit select and then copy if I wanted to use this. When you're in a database that's Gale and you're signed in and it works, you could hit the Google Drive button and the title of the doc would be in my Google Drive now in whatever database I'm in. So this one's called Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. But I could also hit the word download and a PDF opened and I'm using uh, Safari. So if I were to hit the up arrow, it might give me the chance to send it to my Google Drive. If that didn't work, you could also hit the share and hit print. And when you do that, you any page that's on your screen in Safari, when you try to print it, you could pinch and then expand. And whatever you expanded would become a PDF. So you like kind of pinched and spread your fingers. You hit the up arrow again and you could copy that into Google Drive. And when you've done that, it kind of gives you easy access to files and things like that. But an important thing to know is to check that maybe it's there. So you could go into your drive and make sure like, okay, um, that is actually in my Google Drive, either under my recent or under that folder of material. Here's the capital punishment one that I just sent. This is what I just worked on. So this is the full text of that thing I just showed you. And I just wanted to demonstrate it was there. It's also a good idea on your very first day to start a keyword list like this um, to make sure that you are gathering keywords and um, being successful in like organizing your information. And then I want to show you when I'm looking at information in this database and there's all these different types of information. When I were to pick one, let's say it were to be viewpoints. On the side over here, it gives me a chance to look at subject headings. And there's a lot of subject headings here. And you could actually search within them or you could copy them out if you wanted to. And you could paste them into a doc, right? Into um, one of the like, keyword docs that you're making, or you could paste it into um, a spot where you're keeping notes because these keywords and this like process um, is, is really the way to find good information. Everything in the parentheses after the keyword is there a number of um, articles associated with it. So another solution I have, like if you were to look at academic journals and click peer reviewed, it may narrow it down a little bit and you may get a you know pretty small number. But this is a 10,000 word American journal about the Pope and the death penalty and how Catholics view capital jury selection as unconstitutional. They think it's like a problem. I haven't even opened that yet, but if I wanted to use that, that would be a way to get very detailed content that was peer reviewed in this database. But I could also go into advanced search and use one of the words that I just learned. So I could do capital punishment, or death penalty and see if that gets me more or less specific information. And it had 107 academic journals and now we're at 121. And it's shown me that I searched for both. Um, you could also type and use these fields here where you type something on this line and type something on that line and or will give you the chance to um, use either word, search for either word and and requires that both words are together. So if I were to do that again, it just did a little correction for me because of the typo I had. If I did and, I should probably get fewer results 
and now we only got 38 academic journals. And so a lot fewer, because I use the word and instead of the word or in my in my search. So that's a little introduction to this database. Um, I just want to remind students that the when I open a file or open an article, you could download it. You could also hit this site tool, select this information, and then copy it into a doc. And I do that on the very first day because I feel like it has a lot of value and I don't want to um, lose my information. And a lot of times at the bottom of these uh, articles and things like that, there is a citation that'll be copied and put in your Google Drive. But um, if it's not, I really find it valuable just to take it and put it in my doc right away. So that was a quick introduction to downloading, adding to Google Drive, gathering subject headings or keywords, and citing a source in opposing viewpoints. Um, I feel like that is enough of a quick intro. What do you think, Mrs. Uh, Wagner? Yeah, I really, um, yeah. I know you just pre-reviewed the main points, but they are so important that I just want to say them one more time for the students that um, the database, we pay thousands of dollars to subscribe to oh, the yeah. databases, so they're password yeah. protected. And I think some of you experienced this with our practice, baby IRR, that you can't just copy the URL like we're used to. So that's why Mr. Hanrahan made a big deal about like, hey, PDF it, even if you think you might use it. And I don't know about you guys, but I hate doing MLA citation. Ugh, I'm busy, I got other stuff to do. So I love that he showed us when you have that open to use that citation tool, because so many of my students save the PDF. And then later they're like, Mrs. Wagner, where's that citation tool? I'm like, oh, you have to go back in. And I don't know what it is, but when you go back into the databases to try to find the same article, it is never, as easy as you think it's going to be. That's all I can say about it. The last thing I want to reiterate is that we are spoiled by Google. I can type in the cruddiest search and Google will read my mind and be like, Laura, this is what you are looking for. And the databases are an 80s robot. And so I want you to imagine that like you're feeding information like, eh, 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 like the, the printers you guys don't even know that we used to have with the tear off edge in there. Eh, eh, eh. Anyway, old school that it will only look for what you search. So if you search African American, it will not search black. Google will do that for us. We are so spoiled by Google. But that's why um, Mr. Hanrahan was making a big deal about, hey, these synonyms and these key search terms. Here's why mm -hmm. I'm finding ideas for them and keeping track of them. Because those of you that are paying attention right now to the importance of key search terms are going to have a successful research journey and people who are tuning out right now are going to get really frustrated and be like, there's nothing on my topic. So Mr. Hanrahan reviewed those three points, but I really just wanted to emphasize the like the why behind them. But he's going to show you two other databases that you have at your disposal. Any questions so far uh, in the chat or anything I didn't see? Yeah, no, they're along for the ride. I don't see any questions so far. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, okay. Okay. Uh, that was a lot of use of Gale, look at that. <laughs> I came back and I wanna remind a bookmark, I reminded students to bookmark the Wheeling website, the library website, and then there's a library resources or databases site. I think that has a lot of value. We went over opposing viewpoints here, and now we're going to go over this EBSCO one called Mass Ultra. And I might have logged into there before, but you need your net ID and password to log into this. And it has some Google features in that it'll use Google Drive. But I haven't found them to work very well. Um, I will say down here, this limit results full text in the Gale databases, it automatically um, does full text and there wasn't that automatic selection in this EBSCO database. Um, and here, we're kind of talking about these different things where we talked about Booleans and stuff like that or find all my search terms. When you do select all, it's saying that it's requiring an and in between every one. And some of the words I used were capital punishment. And I had a little typo, but then it gives me suggestions, right? And then it gives me all these suggestions. And you notice how it 
put or in between death penalty and execution and lethal injection. I think that's pretty interesting. I just want to do a search, but I included full text over here now on the side. If I want to change any of my settings, I also want to give students the reminder that Google is not bad. We know everything that Ms. Um, Wagner just said is wonderful about how it can read our mind and do all these things. The difference is when it comes to full text academic articles, a lot of times they're controlled and protected and there's a cost associated with them. And we don't want you to pay that. If there's good research that you can find that's academic and published and peer reviewed, um, that's what we want you to get. And we know that you can get a lot of that in here and you can just pick that to then get it. And you can also unselect it, right? And in this database, on the right-hand side of the other one, there was subjects. And on the left-hand side of this one, there are these subject headings. And um, you can hit show more. And once again, the number of um, documents and hits that are associated with all these keywords are an important thing to do. And you can take things like criminal law, you could take all the criminal justice system, capital punishment sentencing, criminal sentencing, and now we have death row inmates and lethal injection. So you have all these ideas that you could select to limit your results. And now, or sometimes it would expand your result, results. You could look at some of these. And as we go through these, a lot of these are um, a PDF file. And this one even says, should capital punishment be retained? And it's a con, meaning it's against it. But then I scroll in here and I don't see the full text. Where is the article? There's a little abstract here and there's some keywords. This is another time to use these keywords. When students get to this point, you gotta select over here on the side this PDF file. And then when you do that and you're on your iPad and you can't open this very well, and it looks like this is from 1927. So this is a super old thing. And it actually includes Henry Ford's idea on this, which may be not very valuable, right? 1927. But since I'm already in here, I'm just gonna show you how to use it. But I think that's an interesting thing to see. You have to hit the download PDF at the top here. And then as I do that, it opened the full text. And now I can see all these people's pro and cons historically. And for this assignment, this historical stuff might not have a lot of value. It might. If you like it, you could hit the share arrow up at the top. It's already a PDF, so I could copy that into my Google Drive right there. So seeing that difference in um, EBSCO and seeing an old document and stuff like that, even though it was published, it says 1927 right there, September of 27. And we could change this date, right? To move this to a more recent time, you know, like you could put in 2010 and now the results are gonna shrink down, right? So much less. And then this one, is a perfect example of how um, racial discrimination, criminal law, execution, and executioners are all subjects. And then this one has the full text right on the page. And the reasons are counted off like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But it also has the PDF in the side here. So that's part of the confusing part sometimes about accessing these things, but also how to gather keywords. And then finally, I think it's an important thing to use the citation tool. So there's a CITE site over here on the side right there. And I think that's valuable for you to copy out the uh, MLA. And here's the MLA citation right there. So you can copy that. We don't subscribe to any of the software tools to like manage citations that way. But you can then put that in your Google Drive. And I do that on the very first day. And this is a way where I also will combine some of the subject headings that I found in a database with, um, and if I wanted to remove things like criminal law, and now I got 582, right? And if I wanted to change my um, 
search terms here and I can expand it to include all those and I use the word or I went from having 500 results when I just had capital punishment and now I have 2000 results and it's still only from 2011 to 2017 and I just made some major changes to like what is going to show up in my list here and I could go back into the subject headings and copy some of these out some of them are exactly the same and some are new and different What's extrajudicial executions? Never heard of that before. Maybe we need to use that for this case. And one of our, our current president is in there too. So that's interesting. Or maybe not, I don't know. It depends on what you need. So uh, that's a quick introduction to the EBSCO database, including the Boolean search at the top with the ORs, um, gathering subject headings, using the peer reviewed feature on the side. But early on, I think it's better to look at the big picture and then narrow down and use those academic peer reviewed sources and stuff like that. So um, that's a quick introduction to the EBSCO database, I feel, Ms. Wagner. Um, yeah, yeah, that was great. And again, you just, I know you reviewed these points, but just to like put the flashing lights by them by how important they are. I hate to waste time, especially when I might be stressed out by a big research project and I don't got time for that. So I loved how at the beginning you showed us to make sure that the full text box is checked. And for this research, your AP graders are looking for peer reviewed and make sure that box is checked. I wouldn't search anything until those two boxes are checked. Now, when you get to like junior or senior year of college or graduate school, you don't have to click full text because you got time to like run around to different libraries and use interlibrary loan and like we don't need to do that as sophomores in high school, okay? Let's make our lives easier. And the peer reviewed, we keep saying that, um, if you just do a Google, if you're looking for research in psychology and you just do a Google search and you find um, a newspaper article where a psychologist is quoted once, all right, that was written by a journalist, not to like knock journalists, but like one quote from a psychologist. If you go to a peer reviewed psychology journal, that person has probably studied psychology for 20, 30 years, wrote this 20 page article and peer reviewed means that two other psychologists needed to be like, yep, you did your research right, this is accurate. Um, so that's why AP seminar and just your college research in general in your future is going to predominantly be peer reviewed. And so that's why you wanna check those two boxes. Um, I also liked how Mr. Hanrahan talked about narrowing the topic. He first started just with like death penalty, but then eventually he saw the subtopic within it about race and how those two intersect. Mm -hmm. And that's why the mm -hmm. research video I made for you guys and also Mr. Mm -hmm. Hanrahan are going to be great resources because my weaker groups in the past have just stuck with the death penalty and been like, I don't know, should we keep the death penalty? And my stronger groups have found the subtopic. So use your resources, narrow those topics. All right, we got one more database, take it away. Yeah, and, and this database that I'm sharing doesn't have any peer reviewed content. It's just a way to gather ideas and keywords. And I just wanna say that because I know how valuable peer reviewed is for the final results of um, what's going on for submitting to the IRR. Yeah, and if they have like nine peer reviewed and want to use one non, you know, this, this is also a very credible source. Yeah, and, and the idea is too that like, I'm not sure what my topic is. I'm not sure what my lenses are. This would be a reason why you'd use this next one I'm about to show you. Yeah. Okay? As you're setting it up, I just want to, I love what you just said, because I think some of my students think that when they're looking for a research topic, they're just going to sit in their room and it's gonna like zap them with like lightning. But um, Mr. Hanrahan and I have written so many research papers that we know you have to do some research to find your research question. So I just yeah. love what you said and I'm gonna mute myself now. Yeah, I, um, I wanna go even further as I'm about to look at this CQ researcher, Ms. Wagner. And if you wanna hop in, I'm very comfortable with that. Uh, nowhere in this process are you gonna find someone writing one of these articles or writing information about your topic that says the social, economic, and political aspects of the death penalty. You know, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna come from a variety of sources and they're not gonna like cover each aspect of that in a way that will be 
effective for you to find it in like a single source. You're going to need to find sources from all over. And I would imagine Mr. Wagner would agree with that. So very um, true. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to be like, um, not to pick on Alex, but Alex from I'm like, hey, Alex, I know you're doing the economic lens. Here is your, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. work like that. <laughs> no, and, and actually the word, the word economic might work, but like cost and, you know, budget and all these other words that mean economic, right? And financial and all those synonyms are really valuable to use. Yes. And uh, anyway, some of, and if you're not sure what those are, that's why we're in a place like CQ. So I'm going to look in CQ and it says browse topics. And I th was looking up death penalty before. So I'd go into like law and justice. And I don't see capital punishment, but in here I see death penalty. Okay, that's good. I'm going to come back to that later. They also have this browse reports and I can go to like issue tracker. And then that I'm going to look for capital punishment again, and I don't see it. But then I see death penalty. So when I click on that, I get these old things. I showed you something from like 1927 on accident. Here, here it is. Here, Sacco and Vincetti, 1927. Okay, So there's old stuff in here. Well, I also want to go back to law and justice. And I haven't typed anything in yet, like death penalty or capital punishment. But when I select it, there's a short report on the death penalty from 2019. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give me, is the public turning against it? Is society turning against the death penalty? And in a couple pages, it gives me some state and local developments on the death penalty. Those are probably societal or cultural or maybe legal or political. Okay, and there's different governors, like the Democratic governor from uh, California announced that they're going to do a moratorium on it. And the Illinois already has a moratorium on the death penalty. And I know that because of prior research. There's a nice chronology here of like the last year of things that have happened. And in New Hampshire, this one sticks out because it's only one sentence. They abolished it in May of 2019. That's pretty recent. Here's a bunch of footnotes, and then there's a citation at the bottom. And look, this is a journalist, so this probably isn't peer-reviewed. If you like this and you were to gather some ideas here, or maybe something about restorative justice sparked your attention, or women in prison, or juvenile justice, something else from what's on this page inspired you, you could jump off to that, or you could copy things out, right? just individual parts. But I really think that trying to print this and cite it on the very first day is a really good idea. So I did the citation tool, I picked MLA and I would copy this out. It has this export, but we don't export to many of those. If you're on a laptop, you could probably do the RTF word processor option. But anyway, you'd copy this out if you're on your iPad and put it in your uh, working bibliography at this point. Um, if you were to hit print on your iPad, it would be the same thing where you could then expand your fingers and make it a PDF. And now this, uh, you know, seven pages or so could then you could hit the share button and put that in your Google Drive and it would be called death penalty CQR. And I'm going to pick my D214 account. I'm actually going to put it in a folder and walk them through this because I think it has some value in like seeing that process here. I do apologize, uh, Ms. Wagner, if we were to go back or if I made a small edit um, to what I talked about in EBSCO, there's, you really got to rename the files in EBSCO, but that's a whole separate thing. And I think I didn't mention that in detail this time and I wish I did, but that's a quick view of uh, the death penalty and finding a topic by browsing here in and I want to do a quick search just to demonstrate like what would I find if I put this in every time today I've only used a handful of words I'm not typing my whole question in I'm um, only looking for specific topics or no broad topics and um, I think it's interesting that the first couple when I did a search 
are about higher education and COVID and China and basic. So they don't really relate it. It takes to this short report here about the death penalty. And then another one from 2018. So maybe I need to look at the one from 2018 as well. Oh, there's new challenges about it. And this came out in October of 2018. And I could look at that there's executions on the rise. There's constitutional issues. There's issue with drugs and um, state another chronology. So this is just another way to use CQ, but I wanted to show students that sometimes your results aren't gonna come up and they're not very good the first five. On the side here, I could narrow it down to just law and justice. And what do you know? Oh, quickly, I got better results in the first couple. And even the one about insanity is still about law and justice. And, different forms of punishment. And they even show you by the topic there. Um, I think that's a quick intro to this. I think that's a okay start for this one. I did want to show you a full CQ report before I wrap up. It's very long. There's a menu on the side. There's a lot of charts and graphs and graphics. And I think it's valuable for them to find some of this information to maybe use it. You might be able to open the PDF just like this and then hit the share button and then copy that into your Google Drive. And um, that's kind of like my summary of uh, CQ. And these files are pretty big and pretty long. As you can see here, this one's like 18 pages. That, that's a pretty detailed view of it. Uh, I guess I could take questions now, Mrs. Uh, Wagner. I tried to do that quickly. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, um, I know in period three, I think it was just like, they didn't have questions at this point in time, but I definitely want to open it up. So if anyone has a question, could you please unmute or could you please type in the chat? While we're, well, I'll just pause a moment. So if you have a question, you can still get some chat, but I wanna emphasize, I wanna remind you of the purpose of this presentation from, from Mr. Hanrahan. We do not expect that you are like pro researchers now and you have everything memorized and right. like, off you go. The purpose right. of today was to give you a lay of the land. Like yeah. these are the different things you need to know. Here are some different resources. And so I recorded this video. I will post it for you later. And it's not like you're going to sit and watch the whole thing with some popcorn again. You're going to be like, okay. What? <laughs> yeah, yes, they are. Yeah, I am my We're voice. Nominated, so nominated for awards. Yeah. <laughs> Soothing sounds of Mr. Hanrahan. Um, but you'll be like, okay, I'm going to CQ researcher. Yes. And I know he said that thing about he search terms, but I don't remember what he said. And you go to that part of the video and you watch that one minute and you pause and you quick pull up your own screen. Like that's how you're going to use the video. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. also wanted to make sure you met Mr. Hanrahan virtually. So you mm -hmm. know that he's a resource that you can reach out to. And um, if you're ever waiting, and I see there's a question in the chat, so I'm going to answer it in just a minute. Um, if you ever reach out to Mr. Hanrahan or myself for questions, while you're waiting for our response, this is also a video you can go to and like take a deep breath and like, okay, let me try this part on my own. So um, we don't necessarily have to use the one from digital portfolio, right? I would, Mr. Hanrahan, good. I would recommend that as your, your first stop. Yeah, it's very good. Mr. Hanrahan didn't have access to it, but I made a no. video on it. So yep. Yep. You have videos on all of them now. So I'd start. So also, I love that question because I know that that person watched my video. Hey, all right. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, now, you, yeah. now you know it all. And the tips that he talked about, about full text, peer reviewed, yeah. PDF, MLA citation. I mean, that goes across the board for all of key search terms. It doesn't matter which database you're in that those skills yeah. transfer. All right. I loved that question. And um I don't think we have any other questions right now. Uh, Mr. Hanrahan, do you have any closing statements before I like uh, stop recording for the day? Yeah, I, uh, you had promoted uh, access to me as a librarian 
Um, and I want to do that as a reminder, meaning you, you email me and then I meet uh, on one of your off periods and we can have either a separate Zoom or I could come to class and I'm going to be in class quite a bit anyway. So I want to remind students that they have access to me to support uh, their projects and things like that. Yeah. Right, perfect. And I love it because while this is often my students like, I guess, second research project, because we did a practice one, like between the two of us, we've written 30, 40, 50 research papers, like yeah. use us as resources because in our own research, we've made all those mistakes. We've done the wrong search terms. We've done the bad research questions. Yeah. We've picked yep. the wrong articles and we just want to save you time and frustration because we've been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the other thing I'd like to mention actually too. Uh, be comfortable making a small shift, a a radical shift though, right? And a big shift, it creates problems for deadlines and getting things done. But um, sometimes you have to move in the direction where the evidence and the, a big amount of information will support your side. If you can't find a solution to whatever problem you're identifying, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a problem. We need to find a proposed solution that is known and you know exists. So and anyway, that's just one about, example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Mr. Hanrahan has helped with AP seminar for years, so he he knows all about the IRR. He speaks the code. He knows. I do. I know the vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, and I'll make mistakes though, and I'll we'll learn together. Um, I can stay if you want, and I can be quiet and mute, and then jump in the rooms if you'd like that. Yeah, actually, that that would be great. Please stick around. I'm going to stop recording right now. Mm -hmm.